All right, so let's pull up this worksheet and talk about uh, how we can use our understanding of the graphs. I'm cursor. <laughs> okay, and I need to make that bigger. Okay. All right, so we've got this worksheet, acid base eight, and my hope is our understanding of the graphs, of titration graphs, you'll be able to use the perspective of working with titration curves and graphs that we've done in lab and apply them to problems, okay? You really understand this material when you can think about how this looks in a graph. So let's break this question down. We wanna know the pH, okay, when we have done the following, okay? We have a strong base, NaOH, 0.1 molar, being added to 50 milliliters of a 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid. So I'm just gonna draw that, draw that here. So I've got a burette, an emptying device that we're gonna see in the lab for this group today. It's an emptying device, so the zero starts on top. You know, you know, graduated cylinders, you fill the zero up, but here we fill up the zero line and then we drop to measure how much we add. But in any case, in the burette, we're gonna have the titrant Based on the reading, it's the NaOH, and we know that it's 0.1 molar, or 0 0.10 molar. Okay, and we know that the beaker underneath, that's the analyte, okay, is HCl, and I'm telling you it's 50 milliliters and I'm already telling you it's 0. Point, oh, Christmas, 0 0.10 molar. Now you should be able to understand what's going on here. We're gonna drop 0. 0.1 molar strong base to titrate this strong acid HCl. But both of these are the same concentration. Can anyone guess what the equivalence point will be? How much base, I should say equivalence volume, how much base do you think I have to add milliliters wise to completely neutralize the acid? Well, I have 50 milliliters of the acid. That's 0.1 molar. This is 0.1 molar. It's gonna be equal to each other. How do you get moles? Volume times volume times molarity, right? So for these guys to be equal, if the concentrations are the same, then the volume needed from the base to neutralize this acid will also be the same. Okay? That's a leap you should have. And let's draw that, okay? Because it's fun. Oh, we can pretend it's fun. Okay. So we're gonna plot pH. Now you don't have to do this for the question, but I'm making you understand that this question is talking about a titration. If you understand the curve, it makes you understand how to attack the question a little bit better. Okay, so this is strong acid, strong base. This is like lab 10. So we're gonna start low, and then we have this huge asymptote and it levels off, and our equivalence point for strong acid, strong base, of course, is a pH of seven. We don't need that, but I'm just reminding you it's only seven for a strong acid, strong base. Now, the equivalence volume, we should always know that the, that the, that the uh, x-axis is the volume of titrant added, in this case, base, all right? And so I go down here, that value should be 50 milliliters. Okay, what are they asking for? They're not asking for 50. They're asking for, hey, what if I had 49 or 51? All right, let's do 49. So if I have 49, Okay, I'm out right here, let's say. Now, I know I, I didn't quite. So this is probably 49 or something close. But, and again, we're just making 50 is right here. What we do know 
is that point is below the equivalence point. What we do know is strong acid, strong base, we get a huge asymptote. So it probably makes sense that maybe this point is not on the asymptote, okay? Now, we want to do what? Calculate the pH. Now, you may say, oh, Mr. Grodsky, that's easy. Isn't this a buffer region? And what do you guys say? No! It is not a buffer region because what are we titrating? Yeah, we're, we're, we're titrating a proton from the strong acid. I'm not going to write HCl with the NaOH, and this is our net ion reaction, a driven reaction. And this is only the net ion reaction you get for strong acid, strong base. When I ask for the net ion on the test Monday and Tuesday, I bet I will get at least one student Monday and the retake Tuesday, write this for the net ion. And I'm gonna go, no! Okay, this is only if it's strong acid, strong base, because the Cl negative isn't a conjugate base. It's not a buffer. The reason why it's not a buffer is because you need to have a conjugate acid in the solution and a conjugate base. What is a buffer? It prevents pH changes if you add an acid or a base to it. The conjugate base will neutralize the acid if you add to the solution. The conjugate acid will neutralize the base that's added. Well, in a strong acid, strong base, you don't have any conjugate acids or bases that can do the opposites, who can absorb anything. Cl negative from hydrochloric acid has no ability. That's why it is a strong acid to accept the proton. Any case. So, I can't use the henderson hasse block. Okay, pH plus the pKa. It's not a buffer. So, I gotta use my stoichiometry. What do we know? We added 49 milliliters of base. So, 49 milliliters of the base. I'm gonna convert that to liters, 0.049 liters. I want moles of hydroxide added. What I'm doing here is I know that I did not add enough hydroxide to neutralize the acid. So to get my pH, all I need to know is how much H plus is remaining at that point. So I'll do a little stoichiometry. Now some people can do this without the table, but we'll do it. So we have 0.049 and we're gonna times it by the concentration of the base, 0 0.10 molar. And if we do this, uh, what do I get? 0 0, uh, 0, 0.049. I think I can handle that. And that's what? Moles of hydroxide that was added. Hey, party people, we're going to do an ice table. Ice, ice baby. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so at that point, we have added 0 0.0049 moles of hydroxide. All right, what was in the beaker? What was in the beaker? Hey, 50 milliliters of 0.1 molar. Can we guess what the moles are here? Well, put this to liters. Liters times molarity always gives me moles. So this becomes 0 0.050. So we'll do that down here if you need to see it. So for the acid, we'll do it in red. We had 50 milliliters. That becomes 0 0.050 liters times its concentration, which was the same. And lo and behold, we get 0 0.00 what? 50 moles of protons. And that goes here initially. And of course, they're both moles. I'll write it in because, you know, I can be redundant. Who's a limiting reagent? Of course the hydroxide is a limiting reagent. Okay, we didn't quite get to the equivalence point. We don't have enough. So that all disappears. Okay, I know some of you guys can do this without the, the so 0 0.0049. This would be plus 0 0.0049. We don't care, it's water. It's not gonna mess with anything. Okay, this is also minus 0 0.0049. It's a one-to-one, -one, right? 
This goes to zero. There's no hydroxide left. But there's going to be some extra H pluses, which is, of course, is going to be 0 0.0001 moles left. Correct? All right. Let's go solve for the pH at that point. At that point, party people, we've wiped away all of the H pluses except for this. This is stoichiometry. We've got some excess. pH is about how many H pluses you have. Hello, that's how many we have in that solution. So because we're after a pH, think of your process. pH is the negative log of the what? Of the concentration. Concentration is a molarity. How do I get a molarity? Moles over liter. So, party people, I take the point zero, 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 0001 moles of H plus, and I have to divide it by the liter of solution. And just like you've done before, it is not going to be 49 milliliters. In the beaker, wasn't there already 50? So, this is plotting the volume of base added to a beaker that already had 50. So 50 plus 49 is going to be 99 milliliters. And because molarity is always in liters, okay, we convert the 99 milliliters to liters to be 0 0.099 liters. So 0 0.00, 0 0.0001 divided by 0.099. And I get my pH to be point, or 0 0.00101. That is equal to my H plus concentration. We are after the pH. So what do I do with that number? Negative log, negative log it, correct. So negative log of my answer. Why is it a W there for answer? I get 2.995. Hey, look at our sig figs. Looks like we have three ending zeros count. So I'm gonna round this to three. So 2.995 rounds off to 3.00, and that's my pH. You had to do some stoichiometry. And whoa, look at that. So Party people, what's the pH at the equivalence point for strong acid, strong base? Seven. One milliliter away from 50, we're at a pH of three. That's a huge swing, huge swing. We're gonna see that today when you actually do it, when you get close to the swing. And that's why when you get close to the equivalence point, we do drop by drop by drop when we're using the acid base indicator because the color change is going to persist longer and longer and all of a sudden go up and that is why when I was at the pool store the guy had an acidic pool okay which means he had more H pluses than hydroxides you see he did he did a pH test of his pool and he came in saying my, my pool's acidic what do I do before I can say you gotta add a base the guy says no 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 <laughs> gotta add pH up chemical which of course is a base now he went home with that okay and he came back, I was waiting for a, a, um, a, some kind of part or something, so I was there for a while. So I had a gathering and I had to wait for this part and I, I just was like, um, you know, had to sit there because if your pool's not working and someone comes over, it's like, I don't know. In any case, the point is he came back half an hour later and said, my pool's now basic. And the lady asked him what he did. He said, well, I added five pounds to increase my pH like 0.5. So I figured I needed five more pounds, <laughs> all right? And, and of course, he went through the asymptote. I was so wanting to talk to him about it, but um, he wasn't listening to me, nor were the people in the pool store, okay? So you can see, like, hey, I raised the pH with five pounds a certain amount. You figured the same amount would be five more pounds. No, it's going to be a what? An exponential change. So he was way up here again, all right? So it kind of makes sense. Now you can say, Mr. Grotsky, how do I do 51, letter B? We're not going to do that. We know how to do that. If it's 51, if 50 is the equivalence point, then we know what? It's one milliliter excess. It's kind of like your last point. Okay, I'm not going to do that. But before I do the next, the next problem, 
Recognizing that this will be a one-to-one -one is important. I want you to look at lab 12, not lab 10, and lab 12 right now, okay? I mean, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, lab 10 and 11, okay? As a reminder, here's what we did in lab 10. We had a strong acid, strong base. Remember, this is pH. This is the volume of titrant added. Okay, you should have that out because you're, well, if you don't have it out, please get it out, all right? And so it should look like this. Started low, huge asymptote. Okay, this is a pH that approximates seven. Okay, just like I drew. In the, both of these titrations, I had a burette, empty device that we're gonna see in lab today, that was 0 0.12 molar for both titrations of my strong base, NaOH. And for both titrations, the analyte was an acid that was 25 milliliters. Now, one was a, this was a strong acid. So when I did this, it a strong acid. Now, what was the concentration of your strong acid in lab 10? Who's got it out? Generally speaking, yes. Okay, about 0 0.06. That's what I tried to make for you guys. So you guys got a 0 0.06. Think with me, molar. Think with me. I made an acid that was half as concentrated as your base. Now, what does that mean? For this to neutralize this 25 milliliters of a 0 0.06, doesn't it make sense because the base is twice as concentrated that I'll need half of the 25 approximately to neutralize it. If this was, if this acid was 0.12 molar, it would be 25 milliliters of this needed to neutralize that. But because the acid was half as concentrated, okay, or you could say the base now is twice as concentrated, you would need half the 25 milliliters. What did you get for the half equivalence volume? Was it close to 12.5? Yeah, well, I, I made that for a purpose. So your half equivalence volume was about 12.5, which is half of 25. Why? Because the base is twice as strong. You need half as much. If this was 0.12, and this is 0.12 like I just did here, you would need the, 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 the um, equivalence volume would be 20, 25. Does that make sense? Okay, I want you to make sense of this, not just agree with it. Now, we did lab 11. I wanted to teach you something else when we compared. Lab 11, we dealt with a weak acid. But the weak acid was also 0 0.06 molar that I tried to make and using 25 milliliters. Now, the curve started higher. It had a buffer region. But it had a half, it had a what? Equivalence point that was above seven because it produced a conjugate base that when sitting in water, ionized water to hydroxides. I'm hoping, no matter if it's a strong acid, strong base, what was your equivalence volume for this one? Should have been similar because I tried to give you a weak acid with a 0.06 molar concentration. Was it close to 12.5? 11.8. Yeah, 11.8. I tried to make it. Maybe I was off by a little bit, but I was trying to make it the same. Was your concentration of the um, of the acid close? 0.065 or something? 0 0.06. Okay, so I was off by a little bit, or maybe the pH probe wasn't calibrated, but I was trying to make the same concentration. So the reason why these numbers were similar for both is because we use the same concentration of base, and no matter if it's strong acid or strong base, they are going to get the same amount of base needed to neutralize them. Remember, the strong acid gives off its H plus readily, but the weak acid needs the strong base to pull it through. So both of these titrations 
I try to make having the same concentration to prove that point, that the strong base makes the weak acid act like, okay, a strong acid by um, pulling every single H off, okay? And I also wanted to show you, all right, that this comparison here, the strong base, the titrant being twice as concentrated will require half a much of its volume to the volume of the base needed. If, again, if both of these were 12.12 molar, I would have needed 25 milliliters here, okay? So those combinations should make sense to yourself. Okay, last question that I wanna do, because 51 is kinda of like point, the last point, it's the excess. I think we beat that to a brown pole. All right, this one is exactly what you needed to do for your quiz. So if you're befuddled about point three of your quiz, here it is. So what do we have going on here, okay? Well, party people, we've got a strong base, and I have 45 milliliters of it, is added to what? Ooh, vinegar, a weak acid. They gave me the KA. All right, I'm gonna draw, because it's really important to draw the titrations or to see the problems as titrations. I'm not gonna tell you it's a titration. I'm not gonna tell you that there's, they're just gonna give you this. And you're, and you're gonna say, ah, oh, maybe I don't know, but if you've been doing the work that I've been asking you to do, and you've been giving me your effort, you should be able to link this up to a visual, and it makes some sense here. So I've got my titration curve. I'm adding a base, so it's going up. It's a weak acid, so it starts a little higher. There's gonna be a buffer region, and there's my equivalence, okay. Now, if you notice something, the base, and the weak acid both have the same concentration. So based upon what we just did with lab 10 and 11, the same thing applies. So if 45 milliliters is added to 50 milliliters of this weak acid, think with me, how much of this base at point one do I need to completely neutralize 50 milliliters of a point one of the acid? 50, right, okay, you're exactly, good. So you're 45, you're under. So that means that they're giving you, say, they're telling you, hey, what's the pH of, let's say, that point? And by the way, based on what you just did in your head, hey, you need 50, because this gives you moles. This is going to be under that. So what would be the half equivalence point? If 50 of this will match 50 of this, if the concentration is the same. 25. Right. Okay, so the half equivalence point is 25. Now you say, Mr. Grazzi, do I really need that? No, but if you know this is 50 and this is 25, you know something. That point they're asking for the pH is above half equivalence, which means we've driven this forward past the 50-50 mark, okay? So let's go find that pH now. This is a buffer region because of the following. What is a buffer? Acid conjugate base. You don't have that in strong acid. So here is the, here is the reaction. We take our uh, HC2, H3O2, that's our vinegar. We're gonna drive it with a hydroxide. That's our titration. Notice it's not OH minus plus H plus here. We're gonna do what? Make the conjugate base C2 H3O2 negative, and of course you make water, right? Because this is gonna donate an H to water, or to the hydroxide. The hydroxide is gonna pull it off, and you make your water, which I don't really care about here. Now, what do we need? Well, party people, how forward do we drive this? How much is this being driven? It's not, when we're at the equivalence point, these guys are both double limiting reagents. Well, we're gonna have little more of, of, well, we're gonna have a little more of what? The conjugate base present. Oh, and if you don't see it, this is what you needed to do for, for, this, for that point home. So we need an equation for this buffer region. This is a buffer region. We need an equation. How do I know it's a buffer? I have a conjugate acid and a conjugate base. I have a weak acid, strong base. I can't use a strong acid 
and it's conjugate base because that conjugate base has no ability. So I know I'm using an equation here, and it's the henderson hasse block. I know you're tired of it. I've been talking about it, <laughs> but here it is. pH equals the pKa. By the way, this is given to you in your um, AP reference table, plus the log of the conjugate base over the conjugate acid. So what do we need? To know that pH at that volume, I need the pKa. All right, well, what did they give me? They gave me the Ka of the acid. So how do I get the pKa? What does little p mean? Right, so all we do is do negative log of the 1.8, second function EE to the negative five, and I get 4.74. And of course, if it was a graph, we could get it by doing that, right? So let me do 4.74. Now, to finish this out, party people, we have to know the molarity of the base and the acid at that point. So to finish this, we need a stoic table. All right, so we're going to do an ice table here. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, now, we need to know the initial, well, initial moles of acid. Well, I have 50 milliliters of this acid. That's 0.1. So how do I get those moles? Hey, 50 milliliters becomes 0 0.050 liters of the acid. Remember, it's liters times molarity. Times that by what? 0.1. What do we get? 0 0.005, correct? Crude. And that's moles of what? H plus, they're in the beaker. Molarity times liters gives me my moles. And that's 0 0.005. By the way, there is no conjugate base yet. Initially, how much hydroxide? Well, I told you there's 45 milliliters. So I make that into liters, 0.045 liters times its molarity, 0.1 molar. Molarity is moles over liters, times liters gives you moles. And this becomes 0 0.0045 moles. I'm gonna put that there, 0 0.0045. It's gonna be less, of course it's less. We didn't get to the what? We didn't get to this point yet. So we are less, not enough base has been added. Right? Okay, <laughs> so what happened there? So let's do the stoichiometry. Who's a limiting reagent? The OH, so that goes bye-bye, minus, all of it disappears. This will be plus 0 0.0045. It's a one to one. And this is minus 0 0.0045. This goes to zero. Obviously, what's left over for the acid, because it didn't all get ti uh, titrated, is 0 0.005. And this 0 0.0045 plus zero is 0 0.0045. Now, now, these little guys right here, brackets, are molarity. Molarity is moles over liter. But because this is occurring in the same beaker, at this point, is it 40? 40 plus 50, it's 90 milliliters, a point oh. So the, the volume is the same for them. So moles over liter over moles over liter, the liters are canceled. So you can plug the moles directly in, okay, in this scenario. So this is the acid goes down here, and this is the amount of conjugate base. Okay, so that's all I'm doing in that, in that equation. So when I make this 0 0.005, this becomes 0 0.005, and this becomes 0 0.0045, right? Yes. 
Now I'm ready to solve the, for the pH. Let's go 0 0.0045 over 0 0.05, right? It's almost one, right? So 0 0.0045 divide by 0 0.005, that's 0.9. So I need a log of 0.9. So it's a little less than one, right? Log of one is 10. So log of 0.9, so you go to log of 0.9. Log of 0.9. Point nine, close my parentheses, and log of point nine. Now it's a number that's less than one, isn't it? So this is going to be negative. So log of point nine becomes a negative point zero oh four five eight. That's the number there. There is more why does that make sense that's not making sense to me I did I think my uh, I got a different number when I added or I did the full I put the full calculation for the calculator I got 4.79 that's rounding yeah but the tw um, this should be above the half equivalence we should be adding not subtracting we have more, con we should have more conjugate base than conjugate acid. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So what did I do here wrong? It is the Not, the, the moles work. So 0 0.0045 goes on top, All right? I do something wrong here. Yeah, 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 I'm just, um, I'm a silly rabbit. 0 0.0045 is bigger than 0 0.00, no, that's 0 0.005, aha. Okay, my bad. So when I make this edit for the movie, <laughs> so it's 0 0.005 and 0 0.0045, so now we can put this in. Let's go find a log of that, my bad. And, I, I, and, and uh, so I go point zero Christmas in July. 0 0.0045 divide by 0 0.0005, which is a much smaller number. You have much more and more conjugate base there. Makes sense now. I get 9. Okay. And so I'm going to do the log of 9. So this becomes the log of 9. Right? Log of 10 is 1. So, uh, so we go log of 9. I get 0.954, that's what I'm going to add to 4.74. And in my head, I knew I had to add to that because that number was past half equivalence and headed toward complete equivalence. It had to be higher. That's how I checked my answer there. So I had 0 0.954, 0 .9, 0 0.954 plus 4.74, the pKa, and I get something close to 5.69. That's my pH at that point there. Okay, so 5.69, and that kind of makes sense to me because this is 4. Point what? This is 4.74, and this is going to be a little higher because why? Well, because we this is 0% conjugate base. This is 50% conjugate base. This is 100, so this is getting bigger. And more conjugate base is going to do what? Make more of this. And what is this going to do in water? It's going to pull the H's from water to make hydroxides. That's why your pH is above 7. All right? So that's how that works. All right.